and welcome back. Today we're going to be in chapter 18 of 1 Kings, and we get to see this really cool event. It's one of my favorite events in the Bible. Um, but before we get there, let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together to get deeper into your word and to come to a better understanding of it. And Father, we just pray that you would that you would open our minds and our hearts and give us that better understanding. Father, just pray that you would fill us all with the Holy Spirit and, and let him lead and guide our every step. Father, we just pray that you would be with us, keep us healthy and strong and in your service. And Father, I just pray for an end to this virus. And Lord, let us get back to fellowship with one another in celebration of you and Jesus. And we pray these things in Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. So today, Elijah is called out of his hiding spot and called into action. And what an action it is. <coughs> so, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And we have, we're going to remember that the message Elijah delivered from God was that there would be no rain these years except by my word. And that being God's word, not Elijah's, but God's word. So now God is telling Elijah to go and talk to Ahab, after three years of no rain at all and, and let Ahab know that he's going to bring rain to the earth. And Elijah went to show himself to Ahab and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. So Obadiah and we're going to see he is a man of God and he's being used by God for his purpose, right? He's, he's not an Elijah. He, he's not being used in that way. He's being used in a different way. But he is the governor or the head butler over all of the king's estates. Okay, so he's a very important person, Obadiah is. Dave, uh, there's just a short description here in uh, Schofield. In such a time as the reign of Ahab and Jezebel, a believer's true place was by Elijah's side. Obadiah is a warning type of the men of God who adhere to the world while still seeking to serve God. The secret of the Lord and the power of the Lord were with Elijah, the separated servant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Obadiah is definitely a controversial yeah. figure. There are people who say, no, he's not serving the Lord, and others who say, well, yeah, he did because of what he did. Um, but I think that's probably a good description right there, is he's trying to, he's trying to be both. Yeah. He's trying to do that tightrope walk, and, and you're going to fall off one side or the other. That's right. All right, so let's pick it up, uh, verse 4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. There he's serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. This is where he's serving the Lord. The fact that he is still serving King Ahab says he's serving the world as well. And so that now you can see where there's some controversy uh, going on about Obadiah as a person, you know, where his loyalties really stand. So verse 5, And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land unto all fountains of water and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the, all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Time out. The king is out looking for grass to feed the animals. Yeah. This is how bad things are. This is the third year, right? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, this is three years, so there's a famine set in. And they're going out trying to find enough grass so that they don't lose all the animals. So verse 7, And as Ob Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. So he meets Elijah and recognizes Elijah immediately, or thinks he does, but he's still going to make that question. Are you Elijah? But he bows down to Elijah. And Elijah acknowledges, yes, I am Elijah. Now, go tell your lord, your king, your master, that I'm here. <laughs> See, he's not a... He ain't afraid of nothing right now. Verse 9, and he said, What have I sinned, that he being Obadiah? So Obadiah, this is Obadiah speaking. He said, What have I sinned, that thou wouldst deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? <laughs> He's saying, I can't do this. I'm going to get killed. Ahab will kill me just mentioning your name. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee, and when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. So he's saying, he's saying, look, this man has been searching for you for the last three years and has, has sworn to kill anybody who's hiding you and, that, and, and makes all these other nations swear an oath in order to keep peace that you're not there. Well, the reputation of Elijah is pretty, <laughs> pretty countrywide, isn't it's, it? <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it, it is certainly international now. <laughs> I want to also point out how verse 10 started out. As the Lord thy God. Now remember thou, this is Obadiah speaking. Why is he saying the Lord thy God, not the Lord our God? Yeah. There's... There's some more of that controversy right there, isn't there? So, so we can kind of see uh, it, God is using Obadiah, whether he wants to be used or not, to protect those hundred prophets and to feed and take care of them. He's been doing that. So he has been serving God in that way. But if he were to openly serve God, Ahab and Jezebel would have him killed. So he's living in fear of his life, not in faith with his Lord. And he's referring to the Lord as the Lord thy God, speaking to Elijah. So let's pick back up in verse 12. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. Now, who's he fearing? Who's he really fearing right there? If I go tell Ahab and you're not here when I get back, I'm dead. But I fear the Lord. Well, you've, you've got to be willing to stand up in these tough situations, don't you? When God is calling you to do something, you're going to feel inadequate. You should feel inadequate. Because God is calling you. But God will equip you with everything you need to do the job. And he will, he will bring to, to pass everything that needs to happen. And he'll protect you while you're in service to him. Verse 13. Was it not told my Lord that what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here and he shall slay me. Again, Obadiah is fearing for his life. And now he's saying, wasn't that enough that I hit these guys? Wasn't that enough? Well, if God is calling you to do more, then no, it's not enough. Let's pick back up verse 15. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him 
today. Now Elijah is making this statement because that's what he was sent to do. God said, go and show yourself to Ahab. Go talk to Ahab. <laughs> so Elijah is saying, well, God sent me to do this. Where am I going to go? You really think he's going to whisk me away and then, you know, tell me to go do something and then whisk me away so I can't? No, that's not God. This is why he says, he says, the, the Lord bef to, before whom I stand. Okay. Elijah is is standing for God and right now he's about the only one who, who is willing to certainly in this manner so let's pick up in 16 so Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him and Ahab went to meet Elijah so say he didn't die yet <laughs> but he's not going to in this chapter either I, I think so. maybe he went to meet uh, Elijah so Elijah showed him where the grass was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, where's the grass and where's this? Where's some water? I can, you know, I can save things or, or save my nation with. So let's pick up in verse 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You came and said to me that, that you weren't going to let it, let it rain, so it's your fault. Doesn't that sound familiar? Isn't that a familiar tactic? You know, never mind what I'm doing, it's your fault. Yeah. Never mind that I did this or I did that. No, it's your fault. But, but here's Elijah's answer. Verse 18, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Oh, you and your false idols are the reason this is happening. It has nothing to do with me. I'm the messenger from God. The punishment is from God. It's because of your behavior. Verse 19, now therefore, Send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel's table. Now the, the groves, that's, that's uh, the goddess Asherah and she is supposedly Baal's wife. Um, she is the goddess of fertility for, for uh, humanity animals getting pregnant he is the god of rain wonder why god made it stop raining god god did god did the same thing in, in egypt all the plagues when you look at the plagues each one is is a different god in egypt and and the one true god is saying these are all false gods i control each and everything that they represent God did the same thing here. Baal represents the rain and the, f the fertility of the fields and the crops. And God says, that doesn't happen unless I say so. And only if I say so. So the last three years, he's been making that his point. Verse 20, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. This is a familiar sound, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Joshua added, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But it's the same question, isn't it? Why are you standing divided? Why are you not united under one God? And this is what Elijah is asking them right now. If, if you think Baal is really God, then go stand with Baal. But be prepared to, to suffer the wrath of the true God. And they knew that. They knew that. See, they're trying to do both. But you can't do both because they're not both gods. Yeah. Only one is God. The other is, is a lie. It's false. So let's pick up in verse 22. Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even I only, 
remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, small g, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. <laughs> In other words, they said, yeah, that sounds like a good deal. Let's do that. So somebody has to answer, right? One or the other. I mentioned in verse 22 there too, uh, Dave, when Elijah said, I even I only remain a prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't realize there was a bunch of them waiting to right. help him later on. Yeah, he, he's speaking because he's the only one standing there. Yeah. Now, we just, we just understood that Obadiah said, look, I, I hit a hundred a hundred of God's prophets by fifties in, in, in caves trying to get out of having to go tell Ahab. And Elijah just let it go in one ear and out the other. He really didn't care. No, go tell Ahab, I'm here. I'm going to be here. So here he's saying that I, even I only, it kind of serves two purposes. One, yes, I'm the only one standing here. There's not 450 Elijah's or prophets of God standing. It's just me against 450 of his prophets. He's also maybe protecting those other hundred by not revealing that he knew about them. But he did know about them. He may have forgotten about them. I don't know. But I think that where he says, even I only, it's just me standing here against their 450 standing over there. He me, also me and the host of heaven. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me and God equals majority, <laughs> and we're gonna win. <laughs> he also, in verse twenty-three, allows them to choose. Let them choose two bullocks, and let them choose which one they want. So they even get to choose the better of the two. If if that's what they want to do. Elijah's putting it all to, the, to their advantage. And he's going to disadvantage himself. But right now, it's all to their advantage. You, check, you, you choose which of the, of the uh, bulls you want to choose. And give me the other. You dress yours. Set up your, your altar however you got to do it. And I'll dress mine and set up my altar. And neither one of us will put fire, because then we, you know, we can test and see which God will put fire to the altar. So verse 25, And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, small g, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was driven, given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. They even jumped up on the altar. Verse 27, And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he's talking or he's pursuing or he's in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awake. <laughs> he's, he's saying, well, you know, maybe your God just, you know, maybe he's in a conversation with someone else. Surely you can't be the only 450 people he talks to. Maybe you need to talk a little louder. Maybe, maybe he took a nap. And you need to wake him up. <laughs> And so, because of, because of what Elijah says, verse 28, And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. 
And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. <laughs> Elijah, Elijah makes fun of them because he knows they're just yelling in the air that nothing's going to answer. That Baal is a false god, does not exist. They jump up on the altar and begin cutting themselves, mixing their blood with that of the animal, hoping that the human sacrifice, human blood, will certainly bring something. But no answer was given. You know, Dave, I've, I've got a little note that I put here in that uh, 27 in Baal, a god, small a, small mm -hmm. g, and Jehovah, the god, yeah. So say a God compared to the God, which is, has no standing, really. And then yeah. I put here in 26 uh, and 7, Baal was either talking, he was busy, he was on a trip, or he was asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, hmm, so he can't, he can't seem to answer you. <laughs> so verse 30, and Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. So, so Jezebel and Ahab had the, the altars of the Lord, of the one true God, torn down. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Tearing things down? And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the son of, sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Let's stop right there. He used 12 stones. Israel shall be thy name. Remembering that, that the kingdom right now is split in two. It's 10 tribes called Israel and two called Judah. But Elijah says, no, 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 God still sees all 12 tribes as one nation. You see, he's rebuking Ahab because Ahab charged him earlier being a nuisance to Israel. Being the troublemaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you troublemaker. <laughs> so verse 32, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. I'm going to stop right there. He is disadvantaging himself tremendously. Now he's got all the people there, and he's having the people gather this water and pour, so they know it's just water. They got it. I heard somebody say, no, we probably poured like naphtha and then threw a little spark to it. I'm like, no, no, that's not what happened. The people gathered water. Remember, he and he alone was standing for God. The people are saying, well, we don't know which side to believe. They take this water, four barrels, three times, 12 barrels of water poured over this altar. The wood is soaked this water up. The, the meat is soaked and covered in this water to where it filled this trench. There's no way, humanly, this fire could ever exist in this situation. It's interesting to note, too, the importance of water in this time. Mm -hmm. Imagine there was yeah. a lot of time. He'd yeah. taken water. Yeah. He needed for grass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there couldn't have been a whole lot of water around and, and to, to dump four barrels on an altar? But they did it. Verse 36, 
And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Take a time out right there. That is a huge fire for us, for humankind to develop a fire that had enough heat to consume the stones. Well, we just, <laughs> we certainly couldn't do it out in the open like that. Dave, I put a note here years ago in verse 38. God is available. God hears. God answers. God's glorified in verse 38. Absolutely. Absolutely. God showed himself right here once again to Israel, to the ten tribes. He showed himself right here by, by sending this fire that didn't just consume the, the burnt offering. It consumed all the wood. It consumed the stones. It even consumed some of the dust that was there and the water in the trench. It just soaked it all up and gone. So what happens in verse 39? Well, let me get my pages here so I can read it right through. Glorification. <laughs> Absolutely. The people... Boy, that's being a stubborn page. There we go. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. One God. One God only. And now the people are united under one God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Now take a time out right there. This goes back to, to uh, the, the law of Moses. That if anyone is a false prophet, you're to stone them to death. You're to put them to death. That's what Elijah just did. He put them to death. He slew them there. In verse 41, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. <laughs> oh, look there. The people turn their heart back to God, and what happens? Here comes the rain. It's coming. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. What's that number seven? That's the number of perfection, completion. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. So, so he's like, well, I'm looking way out there. There's a little cloud about, you know, about this big. <laughs> but on the seventh time, he sees something, right? So verse 44, And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. In other words, you better get back home while you still can. <laughs> and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. 
and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So it went from being this little bitty cloud about the size of a man's hand out over the Mediterranean to suddenly the entire sky is filled with this cloud, this dark, heavy rain cloud, and it begins to pour down rain. It's not just a sprinkle, it's a downpour right here. That is the hand of God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it went from a man's hand to God's hand in a hurry. <laughs> and Ahab rode, rode and went to Jezreel. Now, Ahab's in a chariot being pulled by a horse. <laughs> Verse 46, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. <laughs> Ahab outran a horse. Yep. Yeah, you know, granted, the horse was attached to a chariot and the chariot had Ahab and probably at least, you know, one, at least one other a driver uh, in it. It's highly unlikely that he drove it himself, but still yet, Ahab, Ahab's got a ride and Elijah, Elijah is, is on foot <laughs> and Elijah won. Again, Ahab's defeated twice this day. <laughs> we see two hands yes. of God, one mm -hmm. to, for the rain. One to bring the rain. And one to help Elijah outrun the car and, chariot. And, and both to show Ahab, yeah. both to show Ahab, I am God. And sadly, Ahab doesn't get that message. The people got the message. They understood. Hey, look, this fire consumed everything. They never even got a spark over on theirs. Baal never answered. Why? Because, well, Baal doesn't exist. God answered. God answered. In a, in a huge way. It wasn't that God just set fire to the wood. God consumed the entire thing. It, it was just sudden, it was, it was brilliant, it was bright, it was amazing to watch. And the people all said, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Isn't that amazing how, uh, how off again, on again, off again, on again, okay? He mm -hmm. shows them yeah. by sight, not by faith. He shows them by sight, yeah. parts the Red Sea for them, delivers them time and time again out of the hands of their enemies. Shows them miracles. Yes, mm -hmm. with their eyes, but yet their faith dwindles yep. in a matter of a short time. Yeah, and then they go on to to worshiping all the world's small G's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it makes me it makes me think of Janet Jackson's song, "What Have You Done for Me Lately?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's sad. Yeah. Well, we're going to worship you as long as you can continue showing these miracles every day. But if he showed the miracles every day, suddenly they're less miraculous. Yeah. And it's like, yep, well, he's always doing that. <laughs> you know, hey, Baal, why are you turning back to this false prophet? You know, hey, Mr. Rock, Mr. Tree, <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. But what it does show us is that even today, we would be the same way. Oh, yeah. You know, people, people, I can't say we. <laughs> yes. Because we would acknowledge the, the miracles. We would acknowledge that, that they come from the one true God. Mm -hmm. But mankind as a whole would still reject it. Well, you know, it's, uh, we've, we've talked about that and, and uh, you know, we've, we've talked about the parting of the Red Sea is still mm -hmm. happening today mm -hmm. in, in our lives yeah. and in people's lives around us and the perfection and, you know, uh, just the the miracles and I believe that the the uh, the scripture that says let the man that has eyes see and the man that has ears hear mm -hmm. not talking about 
you know, not physical. everybody's got everybody's got eyes and ears, but yeah. they're not seeing and listening because yeah. they're not seeing and hearing the Lord yeah. and what the Lord is doing in today's world. Yeah. It's by faith and mm -hmm. faith alone. And he's so far ahead of us on our problems. Yes. That we don't realize everything's already laid into place. We just haven't got there yet. Yep. But God's already been there and, and beyond. He, he, he was there in the beginning. He's at the end. There is no end for God. The end is the end of the world as we know it. As we know it. Not the end of the world. But what we know is the world. So we don't have to worry about tomorrow. God's already there. God is already <laughs> there. Yeah. There's one little humor I'd, yeah. I'd mention out of this. Think what Ahab was thinking when he had to go tell Jezebel. <laughs> I got about, about all of her prophets. <laughs> um, well, Baal didn't answer, and so Elijah, Elijah called on the name of the one true God, and he did answer, and so the people killed all the prophets of Baal. Sorry, hon. What do you want to do about it? <laughs> we'll find out what she wants to do about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I think that's all I have to say about that. That's a good lesson. It's a great story. It is. It's, it, and it really does continue on. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's one of my favorites because we get to see the hand of God, but we also get to see Elijah. Yeah. And, you know, what God can do with, with, with one person, yeah. with one guy. And I think that's what he, that was Elijah's point. Look, I'm just one guy here. <laughs> 450 over there <laughs> but watch what God can do That's with right. one guy who believes and suddenly the, the everyone that was there certainly said yeah okay we're on your side I want to be on God's side too yeah <laughs> let's have a word of prayer Heavenly Father thank you Lord that we get to see your your mighty works written down, Father, so we know that you do these mighty works over and over again. And Father, help us to see the mighty works you do today. God, open our eyes and our hearts to your will now. Help us, Father, to be willing to serve you as you call each and every one of us into whatever it may be, Father, whether it be to, to speak with somebody or, or to preach or to teach or whatever you may be calling us to do, God, give us a willing heart. Father, help us to be like Jesus, with a like mind of his, which is just service to you, lifting up your name, that you may be praised and honored and glorified in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Dave. Very good.